to the Word of God. That's where we can ask questions as well, so that if you're confused about something or you don't understand something, you have the opportunity to ask a question or to even contribute because sometimes it's not just to ask questions. Sometimes you may have something to contribute that will bless every other person that is listening. On Wednesday morning, 10 a.m. to 12 noon, is our miracle service. It's a day of miracle healing, deliverance, and breakthrough. And that day is a day of prayer. And if you are not working that Wednesday morning, on any Wednesday morning, it's good to be there because that is where we come and we have concentrated prayer. That's not the time for long grammar. We don't speak that much, just a short exhortation, and we go straight into prayer. So it will help you, and it will be good for you to be there. And then our Passover night is every last Friday, and the next Passover night is coming up next week, Friday, the 25th of August, so a week to tomorrow. And it will be good to come. Come and come with your children, especially since that September, all the children are going to go back to school those going to university, those going to college, um, secondary school, primary school, even nursery or kindergarten, I don't know what they call it here, you know, it's good to come and make sure at least so that they will be prayed for before they start off a new session in September. That is 25th next week. And um, the last week of um, this month, we are going to pray concerning um, the law of substitution. We dealt with covenant of exemption the first week, so we're going to deal with the law of substitution. But you'll hear more of that later anyway. I'm just saying that so that I will whet your appetite. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So before we go into all that we have for today, I will invite the choir to lead us into the presence of God. And I encourage you to join in to sing so that we can touch heaven this evening. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah, praise God, amen, praise God, hallelujah, praise God.
before we go into what we have, I'm sure you enjoyed that session anyway I did. And I know the presence of God is with you as it's with us even right now. Mm -hmm. Before we go into what we have today, I would just invite my sister to speak a word as usual into Amen. your life. I know that God has given her something to say. And that word that she will say, I will expect you to claim that word. And you see it working in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, good evening, viewers. We welcome you once again to Jesus Sanctuary Ministries Hour. We thank God for what God is doing in your lives. And we pray that even as we are here today for this TV program, just like Pastor Missy says, the presence of God is here. And the word of God says that in the presence of God, there is healing, there's deliverance, there's miracles, there's signs, there's wonders. As you watch this program, tap into this today's TV program. And for whatever is your body, whatever it is that you want God to do in your life, believe that God will surely meet you at the point of your needs today. In the name of Jesus, remain blessed and enjoy the rest of the program. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yes, whatever it is that is a problem, there's nothing that God cannot do. Mm -hmm. And our hearts should be open to receive from God because there's nothing that God cannot change in our situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we allow our despair to drive us to where we should not be driven to. But God is the answer to all our problems, and God is the answer to every situation in our lives. And God will surely, like I said at the beginning, God will surely meet us at the point of our need today Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So today we're just going to go into a topic which I say that nothing can thwart God's plan for our life. Nothing can thwart God's plan for our life. God has a plan for every single person. No person that was born or is born in this world or will ever be born in this world came here by mistake. And we need to understand that in our own lives that we are not a mistake. We are not just an afterthought. We are not just somebody, no matter your background, no matter the circumstances of your birth, I want you to know that God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for the life of every person. And no person can thwart it. The only person that can be a hindrance to the manifestation of what God has ordained is we ourselves. Of course, Satan can slow it down. Of course, he fights, of course. And sometimes we don't see those things coming to power. We're not trying to say that Satan does not do it. Of course, he does. He and his cohorts are always fighting. But the bottom line is that eventually, if you walk in cooperation with God, you will find out that eventually God's plan will end up manifesting. Amen. And even sometimes we think that is the enemy, is Satan and his cohorts, are they getting an upper hand? Let me tell you something, that even in the midst of storms and trials and darkness, God will still work out his plan. Amen. Because he has a reason for bringing us to this planet Earth. We need to realize that. We need to know why we are here. We need to know who we are. And we need to do what? Pursue that with God. No matter what we are seeing around us. So that that which God has ordained, that which God has, has purposed or planned before we were born, it will manifest in our lives. Amen. I was talking with my sister today. I was just discussing something, and I was telling her that there was a book I read, and it talked about um, the title was um, God's Devil. And I just, when I, was, when I was reading through that book, it blessed my life, and I was mm -hmm. telling you this mm -hmm. afternoon. Mm -hmm. And what the man was saying is that no matter what Satan and his cause do, we should always remember that Satan is still under God. Satan cannot overcome God. And there are things that if God says you cannot do, Satan cannot do. God can permit Satan to do certain things, but Satan cannot go beyond God's permission. So even when we are going through certain things and God has permitted it, God will still put a fine line that Satan, you cannot cross it. It happened with Job. When Satan came and said, okay, oh, it's because you're blessing him and so what. That's why he's praising you. God said, okay, you go ahead and touch what he has, but make sure that you don't touch his life. Mm -hmm. Even when he came the second time, he said, oh, it's because he's healthy. That's why he's still praising you, even though he has lost all his money and lost all his children. He said, okay, you go ahead, but make sure you don't take his life. Mm -hmm. And he, he you know, afflicted Job, mm -hmm. but he did not take his life. I'm sure his, his purpose was to kill Job, mm -hmm. but God didn't allow it. What am I trying to tell you? That... Whatever God has brought you to this earth, what you and I need to do is to find out why we are here and walk in agreement with God. 
and not allow what we see. What Satan does is to bring things our way so that we won't know when we open our mouth and begin to talk what we're not, not supposed to talk. Once we open our mouth and begin to say what we're not supposed to say, Satan will grab it and use it and begin to use it against people. Sometimes we have carelessly said things and we don't know that the things we have said carelessly is what Satan is now using against us. What he does is to bring pressure and all sorts of things so that we'll open our mouth and say something that will attract or bring judgment or bring one problem or the other. Always know that no matter what it is that you're going to do, the grace of God is sufficient for us. Mm -hmm. It may not seem like it, like it. I know that it's easier said than done. Sometimes the pressures are so much. Sometimes the issues are so much. Sometimes we want to give up and throw in the towel. Sometimes we get frustrated. But let me tell you, there are times I've thought back to certain things and I realized that if not that God was in what was happening, in fact, that if not that I just decided to hold on to God and follow what God was saying, even though it seemed contrary, mm -hmm. that things would have been different. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes God even uses what Satan is doing to move us in the direction he wants. So Satan is still a servant of God. Mm -hmm. When I mean servant, I'm not talking about servant in a good way. A servant that God will use. I say stand here, you will stand. Move here, you will move. So always know that. That's why he cannot thwart the plans of God mm -hmm. for your life. He can delay it. Maybe out of ignorance, we don't know certain things. Mm -hmm. He can delay it, he can frustrate. But the bottom line is that when we come to knowledge of things, we will find out that at the eventual end, we will fulfill God's plan for our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important. The most important is how we end. Jeremiah 29, 11 says that God's thoughts towards us are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring us to an expected end. That expected end is God's purpose for our life. So whatever it is that is happening, the end result is the most important thing. And when we get to that end result, the name of God will be glorified and Amen. Satan will be shamed in our life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Master, please, can you go to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 1, one. Uh, from five, verse 5 to 7. Okay, first Kings chapter one, from five, first five to seven. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, "I will be king." And he prepared him chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, "Why hast thou done so?" And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. And he conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, the priest, and they following Adonijah. And they, following Adonijah, helped him. So you find out here, this, this talks about um, 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 Adonijah, that is the son of David, who proclaimed himself king. Even though God had told David, and David had made it very clear, that Solomon was going to be the next king. Of course, Adonijah was older than him, but that doesn't mean anything to God. God chooses people because right before they were conceived in their mother's womb, God had ordained that person for a purpose. So whether the person came first in the family or second or third or fourth or last does not concern God. All God knows is that before this person came to this planet Earth, this is what I've ordained mm -hmm. on that person's life. So you find out that Adonijah came up, he was must have been a, the, as of the oldest at that time, because Ammon had been killed by Absalom. Absalom too had been killed in battle. So he was the next one. So he proclaimed himself king because then David was old and he decided to take advantage to make himself king. Um, sir, can you just go to the book of um, the same First Kings um, 13, 17. Chapter 13. No. The first, the, um, Chapter 1. Verse 13, yes. Verse oh, 13, yes. Okay. The same First Kings 1. Okay, 13. Yes. Two. Just 13. Okay. Yeah. Go and get thee in unto King David, and say unto him, This not thou, my Lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then does Adonijah reign? So, if you go to verse 17, it's still the same thing. But here, it was <coughs> Naboth that came to Bathsheba. Naboth was the prophet, no, no, Nathan, sorry. Nathan was the prophet that 
confronted um, David when David sinned. So it was the same prophet that came to Bathsheba and said, have people not heard what is going on? Mm -hmm. Adonijah has gathered all the other, some of the other priests and other prophets and they have anointed him to become king. This is what you're going to do. You better go to David and inform him what is going on. So in the verse 17, we may not need to read it because she just repeated what is in 17. She now repeated what Nathan told her and said, you are the one that said that God said Solomon is going to be king. How come Adonijah has now made himself king? Then let, let us go to um, first, this first Kings 1, the same one, 32 to 34. Okay. Yeah. And King David said, that's first King 1, 32 to 34. Yes. And King David said, call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, take with you the servants of your Lord, and cause Solomon, my son, to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, anoint him there, king over Israel, and blow ye with the trumpet, and say, God save King Solomon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then verse 39 to 40, before I now go ahead. Okay. Verse 39, And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle, and anointed Solomon, and they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes, and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of death. Praise the Lord. Well, just, I'm just cutting it short because of time, because if not, it's good to read, if you read from verse 1 to the, to the last, which is about 40-something, mm -hmm. but we can't do that because it's long. You find out that even though God had ordained that Solomon was going to be king, it didn't mean that because God had ordained it, that the enemy would just sit back and do nothing. Satan, his cohorts, his agents, his, his demons that he works with, they will always fight to make sure that God's plan and purpose for our lives doesn't come into being. And it is our own duty as children of God too, to realize that we need to stand up to and fight but we cannot fight for something if we do not even know what belongs to us. If you don't know what God has called us to do on this earth, what do you know you are fighting for? If you have a house and you know that house belongs to you, then you, if someone wants to take it away from you, you will fight because you know it's your house. You have the papers and everything. Mm -hmm. But assuming you don't know that it's your house, you will just be there and somebody will take it away. There was something that pastor used to tell me when he was working in the bank. He said, you see somebody, he will, the person will die. But because there's no... Maybe his wife, his children don't know he has an account. Nobody will come. And he didn't maybe put next of kin. And some of them have millions in their account. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they are, the person's wife or the children may be suffering without realizing that their, their husband and their father had money in their account. They can't come to the bank to fight for their money because in the first place, they don't even know they have money. It's like that in our lives. A lot of us don't even know who we are, what we have, what God has ordained for us, what position God has put us. So we don't even pray to fight to make sure that that which God has said will come to pass. We don't pray to, uh, with authority and say, ah, this is my portion, because we don't even know our portion. But this case, Nathan, but we thank God for people who are sensitive, because when Adonijah was doing this, Nathan must have heard, ah, what is going on? After all, other people must have heard and kept quiet. Some people even joined Adonijah and were doing what they were doing. Even though that David had come out openly, we will not read it, but that's in the book of First Chronicles 28. He had come out openly to declare that Solomon was going to be king. So people knew. But when Adonijah came out, they didn't bother. They just joined him. But thank God for faithful people. And God will raise up faithful people in our lives who will not allow the enemy to take advantage or try to thwart the plan of God in our lives. Thank God for the Nathans. Thank God for people around us that God equally gives revelation to concerning our own life. And that's why we have people who may tell, ah, see what I dreamt about you, see what I dreamt about you, and it will reinforce what God has already told you before. So Nathan came and said, Bathsheba, are you here? See what is going on. Adonijah has made himself king. He has called the prophets and the priests, and they've anointed him king. Make sure you go on to David. And when she now told David, David, even though he was lying down on his sick bed, he called for, the, for Nathan, he called for the other prophets, the high priest, and 
told them to anoint Solomon, which they did. And when they anointed Solomon, if you read further down, Adonijah, when he heard it, he became afraid and ran to hold the horns of the altar. What is the point I'm trying to make? You find out that Satan wanted to thwart that plan because if Adonijah had become king, only God knows the direction that the whole thing will, will go through. God had ordained it to be Solomon. And despite the fact that there was a plan and there was advantage being taken off, in the, at, the, at the end of the day, Solomon, who was the ordination from, of God, he became king. And I want to tell somebody there that we will have to fight battles to get to where we are supposed to be. Don't bother about it. God allows some of these things either to make us to grow spiritual muscles, to make us to be to be, you know, to have faith, to make us to understand certain things. Because at the end of the day, he may not have realized that Adonijah had that plan in his head. As even Adonijah didn't come out, mm -hmm. maybe when he became king, Adonijah may have plotted and planned to assassinate him. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when the enemy comes out, let's not be complaining and be saying, ah, there are too many enemies. See this one fighting me. It's even for the best. At least you know where your enemies are coming from. Because mm -hmm. Adonijah could have hidden underneath. Mm -hmm. And wait to say, once uh, my dad David dies and they anoint Solomon, I will plot and plan how to kill him. And he could have succeeded. So sometimes God does allow the enemy to come out that way. And you may be thinking, why am I going through this fight? God wants it to come out so that you, you will know that you have an enemy. But eventually what happened, the bottom line I'm trying to explain is that eventually Solomon became king. And if you read 1 Kings 2 and go down, the same Adonijah still tried to plot again. He went to Bathsheba to tell Bathsheba, tell um, your son to give me um, David's concubine. Let me marry. And Bathsheba just thought he was being nice, like since David is dead and this girl is just there, okay, he wants to marry her. But taking somebody's wife or somebody's concubine, even a concubine, means that you're claiming that person's position. But thank God for Solomon, who God gave wisdom. And he was able to pick up that since Adonijah could not <coughs> succeed the first time, mm -hmm. he will come again. And what he was trying to do is to, if he marries the concubine, he can claim the throne. Which shows that anybody that has hindered you once is more likely to hinder you again. Forget about all the stories. But that's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that no matter what he did to thwart God's plan, he didn't succeed. And eventually, Solomon commanded that Adonijah would be killed. And that was how his problem ended in that area. There was no more contest for his position. Anyone that is contesting your position in life, anything that is con whether it's in your father's household, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your children's school, God will fight that battle for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are people whose fathers die, whose, whose especially the fathers, when their fathers die, you see family members, so-called uncles coming to fight them for their father's property. Or begin to try to pitch people against each other in the family. And you find family members who are once together quarreling among themselves because somebody somewhere wants to make sure that somebody does not get the inheritance. It happens all the time. You see people, women, when their husband dies, their property is taken away from them. But I thank God because we have a God that knows how to fight. Mm -hmm. What God wants us is to be in agreement with him so that that which he has ordained will come to pass. Praise the Lord. Another example is the case of um, Jacob and Esau. It was very, very clear that God had ordained that Jacob was going to be the one through whom all the promises he made from Abraham to Isaac, the next person will be Jacob. And that's why he said that the elder shall serve the younger. So, even though Esau was the oldest one, God already knew the kind of person Esau was. And he knew that this person cannot be a carrier of that, of that covenant that started from Abraham. That if he gave it to Esau, that's where it will end. So sometimes, why God chooses somebody, he knows why he chooses the person. He knows that this person will carry out his plan. But the other person will not carry out his plan. On the surface, if you look at Jacob and Esau, you may say that Esau is even a much better person. But when it comes to spiritual things, Jacob understood. But you find out that Isaac, his father, was the one that tried to thwart that God's plan. So sometimes our enemy can even be near. Just like Adonijah was the brother, of course, of Solomon. Though from different mothers. This one was, Isaac was about to thwart God's plan for his own son. 
If not that God, God moves in mysterious ways, and God knows how to intervene to make sure, because there's no way after Abraham, Isaac, then the Satan will come and thwart that plan. No. Sometimes we don't realize that there's a lot of manipulation that goes on in the realm of the spirit because Satan knows that if such and such happens or if God's will comes to pass, it will affect him. That's why he's always fighting. But no matter what, like I said earlier, he can delay, he can frustrate, but at the end of the day, that which God has ordained must surely come to pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, please, can you read Genesis 25, 22 to 23? Genesis 25. Genesis 25, yes. 22 to 23. Yes. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled. Oh, that's okay. Thank okay. You. So you find out that this is when Rebecca was pregnant for Jacob and Esau. And there was a struggle. So the fight started from inside the womb. It didn't even start from when they were born. The struggle started. And that's why sometimes too, there, there are struggles, there, there are conflicts you may have, even with your sibling. It's not, it's not, it's not a physical conflict. It's spiritual. There is something that God has ordained that the enemy is fighting. While God is using one, Satan is using the other one. That is just the basic thing. Obviously, God has ordained Jacob. Satan is, is, is trying to use Esau. That's why there's a struggle. So sometimes, not even sometimes, anything that we see happening physically with our relationships, there is a fight going on. It's not just because maybe the person wants to get this or get that, but God has od had ordained it that it be Jacob because Esau has been referred to as what? A profane person. He knew that Esau would not take the promises, the spiritual things serious. And if he doesn't take it seriously, that's the end of all God has been doing from Abraham to Isaac. Because after Jacob, that was when the nation of Israel was bettered. So it was a dicey time. So what was happening was not just a physical fight. It was actually a spiritual warfare. And that is why when we talk about prayers and warfare, it is very serious. Don't, your enemy is not physical, it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. But the enemy, of course, will use somebody. And here, Satan wanted to use Esau, to put Esau, because he knew that Esau would misbehave. And unfortunately, Isaac was part of the manipulation. And Isaac, because he loved Esau, he saw him to go with God's plan. He was prepared to go with his own plan. My prayer is that we will always go with God's plan. Amen. No matter how it seems, always go with God's plan in your life. Because if you don't go with God's plan with our life, at the end we will regret it. And my prayer too is too that nobody, any person that is planning to, to go against God's plan for your life, God will rise up and bring judgment on them in Jesus' name. Amen. So you find out here, too, if you go to verse 28, you see, that's what I just said. said Isaac loved Esau. Mm -hmm. In fact, let me just read. And Isaac loved Esau, that's verse 28, mm -hmm. because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Just to emphasize what I said, that mm -hmm. Isaac loved Esau, so he didn't care about the prophecy. Don't allow your personal feelings. Don't allow what anybody is doing for you to make you go away from God's will for your life. Equally to, don't allow any person to, to manipulate you into going away from of, you know, God's will for your life. Isaac was always excited about the venison that Esau would bring for him. He loved him more than Jacob. So he blinded his eyes and blinded his ears and he could have been an instrument in the hands of the devil to thwart God's plan. But we thank God that no matter what the enemy does, no matter what manipulations come, as far as you remain firm with God and follow with God and pray and stand firm knowing where you're going to, you find out that the enemy will plot at the end of the day, at the very, very final end, you will always come out a winner. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then if you go to Genesis 26, 27, from verse 1 to 4. 
Yes, you Genesis can read. 27 mm. from verse 1. Mm. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, the, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. You can read verse 5 too. Okay. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. So you find out that even though he knew the prophecy, he still went ahead and told Esau, go and give me venison, when I eat, I will bless you. But like I said, Rebekah was there at that time. She just, she, she must have just been passing by. God will never allow any person. We are human beings. No matter what we do, God will never allow us. He will find one way or the other. I'm not trying to say that what Rebecca eventually did was right. Maybe there is another way she could have done it. I don't know. But the bottom line is that God will never allow his plans to be thwarted. So he, she heard it because what Isaac did, why didn't he call the whole family and do it? You call the whole family. You're the head of the family. You call the whole family. You bless Esau. Because you know that Rebecca will tell him, what do you think you're doing? Have you forgotten the prophecy? Obviously, to Jacob, knew the prophecy. And that's what we should be as human beings. We should know what God has said concerning us. Because if Jacob had not known what God has said, maybe when the mother was saying what she was saying, he wouldn't have bothered. How do I know that? Because even in Genesis, 20, Genesis um, 26, when, um, I'm sorry, 25, when, um, what's his name, Esau came back from hunting. He was hungry and he saw Jacob making pottage. I said, give me some of your pottage, let me eat. And Jacob told him, sell me your birthright. Why did he sell, tell him that? Mm -hmm. Even before this incident. So that means that he knew right from day one that God had called him to be the carrier of the covenant from Abraham Isaac to him. He knew, the one that was been telling him, look, God said that your elder brother will serve you. And he equally must have known that Isaac's eyes was on Esau. That if he didn't make a fast move, Isaac would just take his birthright and give it to his brother. So the bottom line too is that we too not, we need to know who we are. We need to know why we are here. So that when we are fighting, we know what we are fighting for. Some of us, we just pray, but we don't know what we are praying for. We don't know the direction we are supposed to be heading in life. You have to know where you are heading. Jacob knew where he was heading. He knew what God has said. And any attempt he saw to take away from him what God had ordained, he thought, he did what he did to make sure that what God said will come to pass concerning his life. And that is where we too have to be what? Strong spiritually. What is our right is our right. You are on your own. When God said he will bless you, he will do this, he will do that. So we need to cooperate with God and agree with God and not allow Satan and his agents to take away from us that which God has ordained for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you find out just like the first example I gave about Nathan, Nathan found out what happened and came and told Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Rebecca too found out what happened or what um, Isaac was planning and came and planned with Jacob. Like I said, I'm not trying to say that what they did was right, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is that God will never allow his plans to be what? Thwarted. They could have been another way, but the fact is that God made sure that she heard what Isaac was planning. God will raise people in our lives that will always hear. In case we don't hear, God will cause people to hear on our behalf. Mm. If we don't get revelation from God, God will reveal things to people concerning you, which will help you in Jesus' name. I'm not saying that every revelation you hear is good. You need to make sure that it's from God. But what I'm trying to say is that God will bring help us so that when the enemy is coming to try to thwart that plan, one way or the other, it could be something that somebody will tell you. It could be, oh, I had a revelation on this or that, and it will be an encouragement concerning you. Praise the Lord. If we go to the same Genesis 25, and um, I'm looking at the time, so I think I will just be fast. Read from 30 to 31. Okay, Genesis 25. Yes, just to reinforce what I said. Okay. Mm. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. 
Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Read verse 32. Okay. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? So you see the kind of person that Esau was. He didn't even care. He was not a spiritual person. Say, so what you're talking about birthright when I'm feeling hungry. Give me food and carry your birthrights and go. You get what I'm trying to say. And even though Jacob later ran away because of everything, he still eventually came back. And that which God had ordained was still fulfilled. Even, after, even though it took 19 years, in Genesis 32, God changed his name to Israel, and that was the beginning of everything. Oh, we already have a, a color on the, on, the, on the line. I think, okay, let's take the call so that we don't waste her credit. Hello, Nancy from London. Hi. Hi, sister. God bless you. Oh, God bless you, my sister. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say this call is for, um, this for a special prayer, please. Yes, what for? Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, I, just, just, I just want God to bless me with a permanent job for this year. For this year? To bless, and, to bless, and to bless my family and for God to give me a good husband. Uh, God, if it's husband, God will give you a good husband. Are you born again? Yes. Uh, the Bible says that he so find it, whosoever find it a wife, find it a good thing and obtain it favor from the Lord. My prayer is that your husband will find you Amen. in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. That your husband's eyes will not be blinded. When he sees you, he will know that you're the one. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You said you wanted a permanent job. My prayer is that God will meet you at the point of your need. Amen. That which you Amen. desire. You want a permanent job. You don't ask for something which is negative or to satisfy yourself. You ask for something which is necessary to have a permanent job. My prayer is that God will grant you favor. God will grant you wisdom. God will grant you understanding. God will open doors for you. Amen. And that job that you're looking for to be permanent, you will get a permanent job. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name, amen. Thank you. God, Thank bless, you. God bless, you. bless you. No problem. So, I think maybe we can continue. As I just said, let me not waste that time. So I'll just, well, I think I'll just go to the last one because I finished saying what I was saying about Jacob. This one is another good example and it has to do with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ to Satan wanted to stop him as well. He came up to this earth as the savior of the world. And in Matthew 2, when he was born and his star was found in the east and Herod found out, the Bible makes us understand that he took aside the wise men and told them, you know, where is this Jesus born? Why did he ask that question? He asked that question because he wanted to kill Jesus. He was the king, so he must have felt threatened. But at the end of the day, no matter what anybody plots or plans, God will always find a way to circumvent it Amen. because his plans must come to pass. Amen. So my sister, if you go to Matthew 2 and verse 7, okay. verse 7 to 8. Okay. Matthew 2, verse 7. Yes. Then Herod, yes. when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and stare it diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. And verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So you find out that when he was asking the wise men, uh, go and find out where Jesus Christ was born, mm -hmm. he was not saying it with good intention. He wanted to kill Jesus because he, ah, another king has been born. It became a threat to him and his own descendants. But the bottom line is that even though he plotted that God now revealed to the wise men in the dream, they don't go back to Herod because this is what he's planning to do. And they went another way. So I want to assure somebody today that no matter what it is that the enemy, it can seem sometimes that there's a lot of fights that is going on in your life. God will not allow the enemy to consume any person Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. What we need to do is to walk in obedience with God and to seek God every day of our lives and to know who we are and where we are going to so that whatever it is we see on our way as we are moving, we know that God is aware and God will still bring us. Like what he did with Jacob, God still brought Jacob to the position that he had ordained him to occupy. Amen. And he was named Israel and he became the father of you know, of 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. And that's how it continued. Even though it was even his own father that tried to thwart that particular plan. 
my prayer for all of you who are watching here is that that which God has ordained for you, that which God ordained before you were conceived in your mother's womb, Jeremiah 1 5, before you were even conceived, before your father and your mother came together and your mother became pregnant, that which God spoke concerning you, it must surely come to pass Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Even if it delays, even if it, there's frustration, even if it seems as if to say that Satan is fighting tooth and nail, the bottom line is that God will surely bring that which has spoken concerning you into manifestation and you will glorify the name of Jesus Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. So, of course, the lines are open. Somebody already called in mm -hmm. before we finish. Yes. Okay. Okay, we have a couple of uh, texts. Okay. <coughs> okay, this one says, Pastor, please. Just a second. I'm okay. sorry. There's somebody okay. that's on the okay. line. Um, sorry about that. Hello, Edwin from London. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hello. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, hello. Yes, I'm hearing you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I love to uh, I, I watch your program most times, even with your husband. And, uh, I'm, um, same evil like you guys, but. These days it's very hard for me. I'm having some kind of problem about believing on all this we we're talking about. You have a problem believing? Yeah. Why do you have well why do you have problem believing? You don't believe is it that you don't believe in God or because, you... because the amount of churches we're having now is more than I, I don't understand. Okay, let me let me tell you why you have a lot of churches. Um the Bible makes us understand that in the last days there will be a lot of darkness, which we can see. There's a lot of evil going on. And the more evil that goes on, the more the light has to shine. Mm -hmm. That is number one. And number two, God equally made us understand that even among the churches, there will be those who are fake. Our, our mission is not to, to follow church. Our mission is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sometimes we get carried away with church mm -hmm. and we miss the most important thing is about Jesus. There's no church. There's no Jesus sanctuary ministries in heaven. There's no Catholic in heaven. There's no Anglican in heaven. It is those who have given their lives to Christ and are washed by the blood. Mm -hmm. And that is why we should allow ourselves to focus on Jesus and give our lives to Jesus. And Jesus will direct us to the church that we will go. So unfortunately, sometimes we look too much at church. Oh, there's so many churches everywhere. It's not about church. So anybody can, some people set up church and they are not genuine. That is the truth. And the Bible told us that, so it doesn't take anybody by surprise. But there are equally those who are genuine. And our desire is to preach the message of the gospel, Jesus Christ, for you to accept Jesus Christ into your life. So that is my prayer for you, Edwin, that the Spirit of God will touch you and that the conviction of the Holy Spirit will come upon you, that you will have an encounter with God. Because when you have an encounter with God, you will know that Jesus is real mm -hmm. and Jesus is alive. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes. Yeah, the text says, Pastor, please pray for fruit of the womb for my sister in Nigeria, who has well, been married over seven years. Also, for God's protection over my children on holidays in Nigeria. God bless you and Sister Joe abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I think Sister Joe, I will tell you to, okay, you pray for her, for the fruit of the womb. Okay. Yes. Her, for her sister. For her sister. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty Father, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor as we lift up our sister's sister or brother's sister who is seeking the fruit of the womb. Mm -hmm. My Lord and my God, you are the all-knowing God, you are the all-seeing God. You are the God who commanded us to increase and multiply. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray this day that that word of God, let it manifest in the life of our viewers, uh, sister, the person who has written this email, uh, text, let it become flesh in the life of his or her sister in the name of Jesus. Amen. That God's name may be glorified in her life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And I pray too for your children. God will continue to protect your children. Amen. Let the angels that God assigned to your children continue to go, consciously go ahead of them and encamp around about them in their going out, in their coming in, 
in every area of their life. The angels of God will protect them mm -hmm. and fight for them in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay, the next text, it says, Good evening, Pastor. May the Almighty God increase you in all spheres of your life. Mm -hmm. Please, Pastor, I would like you to join your faith with us concerning divine healing for my husband from every form of depression. That's from Sister Osahe. Osahe. No problem. Depression is not, depression is from, from the enemy because Satan and his demons, they, like I was saying, sometimes there's so much pressure on people and that's what causes them to break. Mm -hmm. But you find out that even as children of God, even when pressure comes like that, as far as we hold on to God, we find out that the enemy cannot bring us down. Mm -hmm. So well, I will pray for your husband, and my prayer for him is that every spirit, that is, every demon on assignment, messing up with his life, bringing depression, I use the name and the blood of Jesus Christ to bind and to paralyze that demon and command it out of his life in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Any door that has been opened in his life, through one means or the other, for satanic oppression to come in. Father, I pray that, Lord, that you will close that door in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that, Father, that you will heal your son completely from every oppression of the enemy, from every attack of the enemy, from every dark cloud of the enemy, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you say that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I pray, Amen. Lord God, that you pour out your joy into the life of this young man. Amen. That out of his life, he will open his mouth and sing praises unto you to break forth out of that cloud of darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, this text, it says, Good evening, Pastor Mrs. I thank God for what God is using you to do. God will continue to strengthen you. I had a dream that I saw myself and my twin sister and her partner. I was holding 10 pounds and myself and her partner got mixed up with his money and I was arguing with him. I do not understand the meaning of this dream. Please interpret it for me. Well, for you to be arguing, for you to hold money in your hand, and all of a sudden that money is mixed up with mm. your sister's partner, and then there's an argument going on. I, what I would advise you to do is to pray against every conflict. Mm. Every conflict that the enemy wants to... You know, I always tell people that wherever there's peace, that's where Satan comes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, for three of you to be together, is, is obviously all of you get along together. If yeah. not for that money, there won't have been conflict. Mm -hmm. So anywhere there's peace, there's unity, you find out that Satan comes in there. So I pray against every conflict, any form of conflict the enemy is projecting in your relationship with your sister or her partner, I bind that conflicting spirit Amen. and I command it out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every confusion, it will never see the light of day Amen. in your relationship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hello, Kemi from Manchester. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Oh, good evening, my sister. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. I just want to appreciate God in your life, in Jesus' sanctuary ministry. Amen. Um, God will continue to lift you up. God will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you, that what you and you and your husband, Pastor Ozo, are doing. God will increase you in all your in every department of your life. Amen. Uh, this ministry has blessed me a lot. Amen. In Amen. fact, I don't know how to explain it. Mm -hmm. But I just want to thank God for you, for Pastor and all the workers. Amen. So I want to say continue with the good work. You Amen. shall not be discouraged. Amen. As you are as you continue to water the earth with the word of with undiluted word of God. Go wish. God will have mercy on that ministry. Amen. That ministry will be no worldwide in Amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Thank you so much for that prayer. That is even one of the greatest things that we need, prayer. And uh, we thank God because every prayer of our viewers, I know that God answers Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Kemi, God will bless you too as well. Amen. My prayer too is that God will meet you at the point of your need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes. 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 Okay. Good evening, man. Let the good God that we serve bless you and keep you, give you more strength. And every of your heart desire, God has answered amen. them all. Oh. Those that will come against you for evil, they will die. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that amen. prayer. Thank you so much for that prayer. 
Because like I told my sister, Kemi, the prayers that people pray yes. are very, very important. Yeah. And I thank God for that. Oh, we have, do you have time for one more? We have 90 seconds. There's one more. Okay. So I read. Okay, you can, oh, you can read it. Okay. I'm not looking at the time. Okay. <laughs> Away. Is, oh, dear. Okay, let me, because the time is just moving fast. <laughs> My first prayer for those of you who are watching, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life, my prayer is that the Spirit of God will touch you. Amen. The Spirit of God touched us. We are, we are not perfect people, but God touched us and turned our lives around. Amen. I used even my brother Edwin as a point of contact because he, was, he seemed so confused, but the Spirit of God, I believe, has touched him. Amen. For those who are confused, don't, don't know whether we are saying the right thing or not, I want to assure you that Jesus is Lord, Amen. and Jesus will show himself in your life. Amen in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I equally pray too for everything that God has spoken concerning you. Don't worry. It must come to pass. Amen. Don't allow frustration to make you to say things which you shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. Just as God did it in the case of Solomon, he did it in the case of Jacob, he did it in the case of Jesus, even in the case of Moses, he will do it in your own life Amen. and you glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Remember tomorrow if you're a man, Make a date with tomorrow for the men's prayer. Mm -hmm. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.